Now I have to get into the, the Rakeda shit. So uh, I have to be measured in how I respond to Rakeda because the way the Rakeda works is that he, I, I, it, what he's trying to do is very transparent. He doesn't want to do the thing where he says, I'm pissed off that you said all this shit about me. I'm pissed off about the forum. So go fuck yourself, which is what an adult would do. An adult would be direct. An adult has the ability to be concise and to the point and uh, honest about his intentions and his feelings to other men. That is just what a man can do. Uh, Rakeda does not have this ability. He is completely unable to be direct and confrontational. He will always, 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 in a roundabout way, try to address problems without actually stating that they are problems. And I, I want to reiterate that what I said is that Rikeda approached me. Rikeda brought up Drexel on his own initiative without any, uh, without any encouragement from me and used Drexel as an example that I misunderstand people. I have extremely poor social intuition. I don't understand a joke. I can't discern from a story and from reality. I can't discern, discern from the far distant past and how a person is today. And I told him in response to this that I have a, a pretty good understanding of Drexel. I've read through his drama. This post, by the way, I'll uh, copy this link and throw that in the chat so you can see it on screen and find this at your own leisure if you would so uh, be interested. This post is a comprehensive explanation of who Drexel is and if you are interested oh it doesn't show up on the screen wonderful <laughs> um what if I do it on Odyssey does it show up there it's not showing up so far what about rumble come on one of these has to work ah there it goes okay so now you can see it on the screen if you want to go find it that's a permalink so it will work at any time even if it gets moved to its own thread or whatever it'll always work um, <clears throat> just make sure the domain is right uh, for your for your use in the the future. The so the the post is very comprehensive. I'm not going to read through all of it, but it very clearly states through Jack, Drexel's own words. Which again, if you're telling a story, you're going to tell that story in a way that is as favorable to you as could possibly happen. And I'll just read what he says. Um. My good friend's daughter, a teenager at the time, 13 to be precise, and I were always cool. No, I never groomed her or said one word of sexual nature around her. She learned of my exploits through others. She eventually goes to college and dated a simp. I innocently met up with them at her behest at the state fair, and then he exposed his simp nature to me, a non-simp. They broke up before she moved across the country to do her doctorate program at age 22. Once there, she said she contracted me about wanting to do explore BDSM. I reluctantly agreed, so I took her to a bondage club to see if it was truly for her. And it was. Uh-oh. I tried to pursue her to find a professional dom out there, but there were none to 100% trust. So I had to fill the role so she could explore without getting exploited, sold into a sex ring, hurt or killed, Locally, multiple deaths happen at a dungeon club inside gay 90s due to these Craigslist doms not knowing what the fuck they're doing. Eventually, her mom found out due to the Apple Cloud, and that was that. Zero grooming. Kill that noise and get your facts straight. Drexel hooked up with a woman. She had a 13-year-old daughter. He took this 13-year-old girl to Disney World. He bought her her first set of Mickey Mouse ears. Years later, and by the way, the age is conflicting. The first time he told this, she was 18 or 19. <clears throat> now he says 22. But as an adult, I think in his 30s or 40s at this time, has sex with the now of age girl, the uh, daughter of a friend that he also fucked. If you've ever heard the statistic that a child is most likely to be molested by someone they know, the reason why that is a statistic is because the stepfather thing is a crisis. If you are a single mom, your options for dating are pretty low. And if you are a single mom, and especially if you have a 13 year old girl in your custody, your sole custody, you may attract a specific type of man who is very exploitative and very willing to lie to your fucking face to get access to something else that he's interested in. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> the, um, 
the point that I was making is that it is absolutely morally reprehensible. And even this, like he's trying to portray himself as some fucking hero. If he didn't immediately step in and fuck her hardcore and BDSM style, then she would have been fucked by somebody else who is dangerous. Unlike Drexel, who is a hero to be uh, commended for uh, and lauded for how valiant he is in saving this girl from being sexually exploited by somebody else. And I'm just supposed to believe this at face value. And I'm supposed to assume and clear my mind that the thing that it probably would happen in this situation didn't happen. Um, so when he, when Rakeda brings him up to me and says to me that I don't know what I'm talking about about Drexel and I start laying out the facts about what he said over the years, um, he says, well, I don't know. I didn't know all that. He said, he tells me, I don't know all of that. Um, <clears throat> and I said, well, if you're going to come to me and you're going to try and confront me on something, oh, sorry, I might have rumble open twice. I do actually, if you're going to try to confront me on something, then maybe you should know what the fuck you're talking about before you try and confront me on it. And then he gets upset and he says, Josh, you're so fucking autistic. You don't understand. I'm just using Drexel as an example of your wronged thinking and how you presume facts that you don't know about because you were told them by untrustworthy people on the Kiwi farms. <clears throat> and I take offense to this because if you're going to come to me and you're going to tell me, Josh, the sky is green and you are so dumb that you can't see for your own eyes that the sky is green when lo, it is so true that the sky is green. And then I open the fucking blinds and I say, look, forsooth, the sky doth be blue up in the fucking up, uh, up there. And he says, ah, tis but a trick of the iron eye and thine art autistic. And you don't understand the the profundity of my statement. I'm trying to make you understand that you don't know what you're talking about. And sure, in the fucking example that you gave me, I'm wrong. Um you should still come to my way of thinking. It just doesn't make sense. If you're the whole point, like I said, if you're going to like what I just did, Rick, Rikita comes to me. He tells me something wrong. I prove to him that it's wrong. And then he gets upset that I'm not following his logic. That's an example. And it's an example because we know the sky is blue. It's true. You can't then come back to me and be like, well, sometimes it's pink and turn twilight because that's fucking gay. It's an example that's always true when you understand it. So when you come to me and you're trying to explain something and you're coming at me with an example that isn't fucking true, then maybe the takeaway of that should be you don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you're wrong. But of course, he doesn't come to that and he circles around and reasserts that he's completely right about Drexel. I just don't understand that it's a story and it happened in the past. I don't care if it happened in the past. He was a fucking adult. He was in his, he wasn't even a young adult. He was in his thirties when he decided to do this. So I'm in my right to assume that he's a bad person because he did bad things as an adult. It doesn't matter if it was five or 10 years ago, because that's a relatively short amount of time in his life. He was still the same person then that he is now. So therefore I'm going to judge him for it. Um, and then of course, when I talk about Drexel and I, I make fun of him, Rakeda complains, you still don't get it. And you still think it's about Drexel. Now I also want to say this, that Rakeda accuses me of being racist toward Drexel. I am racist. What that means is that when I encounter people that I, uh, have negative bigoted emotions towards, I have a preemptive negative disposition towards them. That does not mean that I'm going to hate every single person that I meet of specific dispositions because I like a lot of people who are of that disposition. It just means that uh, I'm biased, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to assume that Drexel is molesting kids because he's black. It just means that um, <laughs> when I see Drexel doing this shady shit, I'm going to, I, I am, I'm going to say, look, it's exactly what I thought it was. But it's based on his own words. It's not based on um, something that I made up. It's based on what he's told people. He told people that he met this woman, that he fucked her, that he took her kids to Disneyland. And then a sh few years later, he's fucking her in hardcore BDSM. And he blames that on everybody else except him. He, in, when of course, and he fucks her, that's a gift to her. Of course, I am going to assume that this guy is a pest and I, I am going to make fun of him and I'm in my rights to do so. And him being incidentally black 
in this instance. It's not a, a manifestation of my racism. If anybody said, if Vito said this, I, of course, would be making fun of Vito. If Dick said this, I would be making fun of Dick. If Ricada said this about himself, I would be making fun of Ricada for the exact same thing. So I don't know how he can say that I'm racist for this. By the way, in the conversation, the shower talk that I had with Ricada, he is... um repeatedly i i go out of my way in this conversation and i i literally wrote out messages and had to delete them where i avoided saying anything about drexel being black i didn't even mention it in a two hour long text message on with this guy rikeda repeatedly referred to him as the negra the negra i know you hate the negro i hate no you hate the negro the damn negra he repeatedly tried to invoke race into this conversation i didn't i did not take the bait it was tempting to take the bait sometimes but like i didn't so him again trying to inject race in this is him manifesting what he wants to hear from me so that he can make that the point of contention with the point of contention is that he is sexually exploiting uh uh children that he knew for who grew into adults but that is the literal dictionary definition of a grooming when you like uh, grace thorpe grace thorpe is having sex with her dad but did they have sex before she was 18 probably not it's hard to tell but does that make it okay no because he was in a position of power over her and used that to make her ready for sex with him as soon as she, be she became legally able to do so that's also not okay and they're also white by the way so that's the first lie the second one and this one is is unforgivable because i know what he's doing when he messaged me and he told me that um he was mentioning all these issues and how people assume things that may not be true and i told him Ricada, this is human nature you go out into public and you say x y uh, and alpha so when people see x y and alpha and they don't have the full picture the human brain instinctively across racial boundaries across time and place depending doesn't matter who you are or when you're at when you see a pattern you will fill in the gap and you will fill in the gap with the most likely answer which is what you're most likely wanting to believe i tell him this this is just how people work you made these things public you didn't make everything public and now people are going to assume um certain things about you that's just how people are and if you don't like it you should make fewer things public that people can make negative assumptions that you don't like about he took this very poorly and continued to press that it was a specific thing with the forum. The forum is very stupid. And I told him, can you give me, and it was line crossing harassment and deliberate affront to his business, things that he was hurting as a result of. And I said, can you show me an example? I want you to show me what you're talking about. Stop talking in roundabout ways. Stop hinting at this huge problem that I just don't understand. And then backing off when I ask you to show me what it is. He just doesn't. He just doesn't do. Um, he just doesn't do it. And I, I said, like, I need you to show me a post. I need you to tell me a username that I can look at to to validate what you're trying to say. And then at that point, he backs off and says, I'm not trying to get you to do anything. I, it's not like that. I know I can't. You can't control what people say. And he like he gets so close to just saying, I need these things taken care of, and he never touches on it. And I told him. Ricada, I cannot censor the Kiwi Farm Center just preemptively because he keeps circling this topic. I say, I cannot censor people. I cannot ban people for you. And I cannot control narratives. I cannot go into your thread and try to fix things. If I go into a thread and counter the narrative, people are going to be like, wow, that's really suspicious. And they're going to double down on what they believe. So he portrays this the opposite way where I'm begging him, Ricada, please. Please, Ricada, let me make things straight with you. Let me make things straight. I need you, Ricada. What gets deleted? Just tell me who's banned and they're gone, Ricada. I need that thread deleted today. Just let me know. Give me the signal. I'm at your beck and call. And it's it's so fucking manipulative. And I'll, I'll play you. Uh, this guy made a very handy video explaining exactly what I'm talking about. It's a minute and a half. So let's watch it. Uh, in fact, one time I brought up that I thought the rules on the forum uh, we're not being enforced properly. And he's like, who? What's the name? What's the name? Wh who do you want me to kick off the board? I'm like, Josh, I don't want you to kick anybody off anything. What the fuck are you talking about? You, you made a statement that I took issue with. 
And what was that? You said, you said that the thread was like line crossing harassment and it had broken its original motive of being watch only. And I've, I have no idea what you're referring to. No, no, no. Okay. So there's a rule on the farms, right? If I'm not mistaken, there's a rule of don't touch the cow, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. There, there are people in various threads who intentionally touch the cow and sometimes they get removed and sometimes they don't. And I think in that there's reference been... to who though. He's like, who? What's the name? Like, can you uh, give an example? Well, for me, for some examples, yeah. What happened to you that would be line crossing? I, I, I mean, can't think of whole... since off the top of my head. What's the name? Wh who do you want me to kick off the board? Well, there there are users in my thread who uh, have definitely like intentionally tried to interfere with shit and to pro provoke and, and provocate stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't ask you, you to any... remove anybody. I don't do that. Like, I'm not going to be like, ah, well, let me I report don't, this. I don't know what sure. you, I legitimately don't know what you're referring to. I can't I, think of I an instance. I can talk to you privately about it. I'm not, I don't want to call out people. Like, okay. I don't, okay. I don't want people. He's like, who? What's the name? What's the name? Who, who do you want me to kick off the board? What the fuck are you talking about? That's literally how it goes in private, too. Because he, he says, there are these problems. There are specific problems with your site. That are line crossing the rules are not being enforced they're false and malicious and i say what are you talking about and he says well i'm not trying to censor anything because he knows that he if he, something were to happen and he were to ask for xyz ask for a favor and that were to get screen capped and shared that would be a liability and a risk that he's not willing to take um so instead when i ask him what is he trying to accomplish he takes that and he lies and he tries to say, I'm not trying to figure out what the fuck he's wanting uh, and preemptively taking off the table that I will not be censoring the thread or banning anyone at his request unless it is genuinely line crossing harassment or something. Uh, he takes that and flips it on his head and says that I'm desperate for some way to make amends by censoring people on the site. And that is uh, a dick move I did not expect. And the real shame here is that what he's doing... Um, is very passive aggressive and i'll explain it in a second but uh, i want i want to show this let's go back to drexel real quick because i have these lined up I, I skipped over this but um this is drexel i think and again in a more contemporaneous time it re-explaining the the grooming thing so i want you to look at everybody else's face while he's explaining this you ready thing she said the funny thing is about people who make those comments is she goes do you know where I learned about all of you being in the lifestyle, hosting gangbangs, orgies, swinger parties? She goes, do you know where I heard it? From the very people who were most pissed at me, being oh, the yeah. mom and the yeah. people around her, because that's who told them. I never I never once said anything sexual toward this girl as, as a teenager, as a minor. I never made, you know, made innuendo. Of course. So who was doing it? Ironically, it's the people, like I said, it's her mom and her mom's friends, which are our mutual friends, right? Who were making comments like, oh my God, Drex does this, Drex does that. So she's hearing this. Yeah. She saw a, uh, she saw shit in her mom's phone regards to me, right? So that's the great irony. Like, the, so basically if anything, yeah. the, you know, to use the grooming term, it's like yeah. by you being exposed, her being exposed to her own mother and her mother's friends, basically kind of built me up you see what i'm saying his literal defense of what he's done is that his uh, her mother was so vocal about her lust for bbc and bondage that her daughter through the ether of how loudly she was declaring her love for the bbc she wanted i gotta get in on that i gotta get in on that it just sounds so good i gotta get tied up and fucked in the ass by a black man that's the only way that i can i can uh, be satisfied in this life a 13 year old heard that and then said that's that's what i want that's what i want in my life uh, that is fucking bullshit and everyone fucking knows it and that's why they look so uncomfortable in that clip this is how this is how he he talks about himself he says Tell me all the legal women you cherish and I'll nut all over them. Be a good boy and eat some black bull cum. Hide your kids, hide your wife. The black bull is coming for them. Ook, ook. Rakeda is going to call me racist. And this motherfucker is in his Discord saying, Hide your kids, hide your life. The black bull is coming for them. Ook, ook. I don't need to be racist. 
I'm just going to point. I'm going to make a, a very serious expression. I'm pointing at him. My face is completely stoic and I, I'm, I am implying racism, but it doesn't need to be fucking said. Okay. That, that's just who Drexel is. That's why I make fun of him because he is a bad person. Um, so that's the Rikeda Drexel thing. Back to Rikeda. I serve no purpose to Rikeda. In the last year, um, there has been a lot that's happened to the Kiwi Farms, starting with the Keffel ship. Uh, Rikeda has stopped inviting me onto his show. There have been serious, especially with the Attorney General of Washington, there have been serious um, escalations with Hurricane Electric. That would be nice to have an audience to talk about. Uh, Rikeda in the past would have been immediately interested in talking about such a thing. He's never made a word about it. As far as I know, he's never talked about the fact that Melinda Scott, the Mountain Jew shit, was something that he would rate on stream as prime content. No interest in how that case has resolved after two years. No interest. And that's fine. If he doesn't want to talk to me, that's fine. I don't care. But it's really obvious that he is trying to distance me from him and not promote my content or my issues or my plight because he doesn't care. He wanted the site to go down as far as I'm concerned. And the fact that it's climbing back up and trying to make legal waves in order to accomplish this is irrelevant to his interest as a uh, hedonist on stream. Um, in regards, he has replaced me with Vito the pedo. I will reiterate that Vito Gasaldi is a pedophile. I think he's an active threat to children. I think that his association with Max Carson makes it obvious to anyone that he is a sexual predator who knows sexual predators and hangs out with sexual predators. I don't know if he's ever touched a child. I have no evidence of that. However, I do think that he's sexually attracted to children. And I think that a reasonable person looking at the things that he said and the quote unquote jokes that he's made and the company that he keeps, that that is a reasonable decision to reach. And probably the most obvious one to any normal person. Uh, so he, as he's defending Beto and saying, why are the left and the right both trying to sacrifice comedy on the altar of false self-righteousness? And this is, why is that for every message right now? I fucked that up. Sorry. Um, um, which is the, this is the exact statement that dick me this is word for word verbatim oh people are trying to ruin comedy we can't talk about fucking kids anymore it's just a joke haha -ha. it's totally just a joke haha -ha. why are people so indignant about this word for word that's what dick says very coincidental uh it's intentionally misunderstanding obvious jokes for moral outrage isn't actually a good thing uh someone replies saying because the jokes are poorly timed and timing is the essential to comedy Okay, it says poor jokes don't make people bad it makes the jokes bad people are criticizing jokes people are saying the jokes are proof of a fact it's not the same i disagree let's take a look at what eric Jul this is a response to eric july tweeting this out saying i found some new stuff out about Vito. apparently these are all reals i apologize for being ignorant in the context of why people refer to him as the way they do edgelord or not these are not things you joke about these are defending needs and hard drives checked uh, do not ask me about this weirdo again. This is Vito Gasaldi saying, Vito I, is not trying to fool anyone. I am going to fuck your kids. Vito says, after Vito finishes butt-fucking this eight-year-old, he gave me some great tips on doing crowd work. Vito says, Vito's not joking. Hide your children because Vito is coming for them. Vito cannot stop himself. Vito says, I, um, Vito thinks you're under, underestimating how many normal men could become aroused by a minor under particular circumstances. That does not even seem like a joke. This one could just be like, haha, I'm so AJ, I'm going to talk about fucking kids. This one, that's not a joke. He's legitimately saying that he gets aroused by watching cuties. <laughs> and it's just like, this, this is, the, the Kiwi Farms is currently um, awaiting a response from the Attorney General of Washington over the fate of internet neutrality in one state, which would be a national news line if it was not the Kiwi Farms. It would be something for alt tech people like, Rikeda, if he was doing a law stream to eat up because what a great thing. Um, but no, Rikeda is not interested in that anymore. He's interested in defending video Gasaldi in these tweets, which are high comedy that nobody should ever be judged for. When you say things like this, according to Rikeda, you should never be judged for it. You should only be judged for how good the joke is. And thus, uh, I come to my conclusion that the, what Rikeda wants is not friends. A friend will pull you aside and tell you repeatedly over years that you are concerned about the direction that he's going, that you want the best for him, for him and his children, his white children, because you may be a racist friend. And you may outline certain things that you're upset with, that you don't like, that you're concerned with, and that you would like to see him change. A friend would do that. Um, what Rikeda wants is not a friend. What Rikeda wants is an enabler, someone like Dick, 
who can enable any behavior. You look at Dick and Ralph, down, Ralph is left to his own devices. Dick makes no effort to intervene. He says it's not his place because he doesn't give a fuck. Um, if Ralph wants to drink himself to death and pop pills until he's literally vomiting and asphyxiating his own vomit in the gutters of a Mexican hovel. Uh, that's no problem. Dick doesn't care. That's his own choices, and there's no reason why he should be concerned with that. Uh, and it, it's very obvious to me that what Ricardo wants is someone like that who's going to tell him over and over again that the decisions that he makes are the right ones, or it's up to him, and nobody should be the judge of his character because of that. Uh, which I am unwilling to be. And it's very obvious also, based on what Ricardo has said, that he wants me to be the one to say, we're not friends anymore. I would be completely within my right to say, uh, you're lying about me deliberately to try and drive a wedge between me and my community. Um, that's pretty shitty. Go fuck yourself. Very reasonable person. It would be extremely reasonable to say that. And it wouldn't even be mad at the internet because it's not the internet that is pissing me off. It's one particular person. However, chat in good faith, I will treat Ricada as he's treated me. Cause whenever he signs off these rants about me, he says, I love Josh. I love the Kiwi farms. Um, I just think that everything about him is shit and his community is fucking garbage and I don't care. In fact, I hope it goes away because fuck it. Uh, that's his, that's his thing. He get, does this really passive aggressive thing where he circles around telling me to go fuck myself, but he can't be the one to say it. Uh, so I will not be the one to say it. In fact, I'm going to treat Ricada just as he treated me. And I'm going to say, Nick, I hold no ill will towards you. I totally forgive you for lying about me. Uh, offering to censor your thread. I know from your nose, it's just part of your nature and you can't help yourself. Your car is so cool and you totally deserve to treat yourself. And if you're ever down a man at the bull run, I'll be your guy. And if you're that Baldo ever cuts off circulation and you need help to sire number seven, I will be your stud. And God forbid something happens at your family meetup with Dick and Vito that proves me right. I'll be there with you. Overnight flight with two blue barrels and 50 gallons of hydrochloric acid to set everything straight. Because I love you, buddy, and I care about you, and I wish the best for you. And that is my response, my comprehensive response to Ricardo. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.